Good morning, and welcome to Bavarian International School's virtual open day of 2021. As we continue to have more attendees join, I'm going to introduce myself and our panelists. I'm Dr. Chrissy Sorensen. I'm head of the school here at Bavarian International School, BIS, and I've been the head here since 2014. I'm also the executive board member, and prior to BIS, I was the head of Dresden International School for six years. And before that, uh, in 2001, I actually started an international school in Monterey in California. So I have been leading international schools for 20 years already. I'm also currently the president of the board of the Academy for International School Heads, which is an organization for international school heads from all over the world. And I'm also active in Rotary here in Munich. I myself am a mother of three, my oldest two having graduated from the Dresden International School and they've already finished their studies. And my youngest, uh, he is still in school. He's at our school here in Heimhausen. He's in grade eight. So I have also very recently experienced the range of, of course, on-site learning, distance learning, and this in-between hybrid learning. Further panelists that you can see are Dr. April Yetzko. He's, she's our primary school principal at our city campus. Nicola Maloney, Vice Principal and Primary Years Program, or we call it the PYP Coordinator. And as, uh, also Petra Douglas, who is our City Campus Admissions Officer. I'm gonna share my screen now. So um, our virtual day is being recorded. So in the interest of data protection, only the panelists are uh, able to turn on their microphone and cameras. We've prepared a brief overview of our school and program and we'll follow with a question and answer, a Q&A session. We ask that you type your questions into the Q&A, which is at the bottom of your screen. And I will then read them aloud at the end so that they are also in the recording and uh, then I'll answer or pass on to the respective panelists. You should be able to type in your questions as you have them. So you don't have to wait until the end um, until the actual Q&A session begins. So BIS is one of approximately 5,400 IB world schools in 158 countries spread all over the world. This is a wonderful network of schools that shares best practice and learns from one another. I know your children are primary aged and you may not be able to imagine them in secondary um, just yet, but believe me, as the mother of three, it happens quicker than you think. Looking at our most recent secondary results, not only did all of our students graduate with their high school diploma and either the International Baccalaureate Diploma or the International Baccalaureate Careers Related Diploma. Um, our IBDP, that's the diploma program average, was 36 compared to a worldwide average of 31, which if you're familiar with the German Abitur, that equates to an average of 2.0. And this year, BIS turned 30. So based on a sound tradition, we are shaping the future of education. You are attending our city campus open day, which is one of our two campuses. We start with our early years, aged three, also known as kindergarten 2.0, and more details will be coming from April and Nicola on that. And then we go on to primary school, which encompasses in our program grades one through five. From there, students continue to our secondary school, grades six through 12, which is at our Heimhausen campus. That, that's in Kais Dachau, which is about 15 kilometers north of Munich. Our full day program at City Campus starts at 8.20 and runs until 3.20 in the afternoon with fee-based after school activities and care offered until five or even six o'clock respectively. We are a true international school with a very diverse and inclusive community. BIS, the city campus, currently has approximately 260 students with 34 different nationalities represented. And they find themselves represented in our staff as well. English is our shared language. And what makes us truly international though, is our curriculum. Again, Nicola will share more about that uh, a little bit later. 
BIS embodies an international spirit of global citizens and future game changers. When BIS was deciding on our school, on our second campus, we found the location in Munich Schwabing ideal. So close to the Leopold and B13 Mittler Ring junction, the campus is easy to access, even in normal Munich traffic conditions. This urban campus has generous classrooms and hall space. So even when other local schools had to split classes, we were able to distance our students so that all could be in on-site learning. Our students are digital natives and adept at using multiple platforms, whether they are working individually or in groups. And again, you'll hear more about that collaboration um, when uh, Nicola and April are speaking. We recruit and retain top-notch teachers from all over the world. We have a maximum class size of 22 in our early years program and 24 in our grade one through five. In addition to the classroom teacher, we have teaching assistants in the early years uh, through grade two. And then we have also specialist teachers for music, for PE, for German, which also starts in the early years. We have a nurse, we have a counselor, we have learning support as well as English language support teachers. Our teachers really know their students, giving a personalized education for individual pathways to success. Technology is not the be all end all, but if the pandemic has taught us anything, it is a tool that we cannot live without. BS, BIS has been working with educational technology already since 2002. This includes interactive whiteboards and Apple TVs. We have IT support, continued professional learning for our teachers. We explicitly teach digital citizenship and ensure there is more non-screen time than having students on devices. Technology is simply another tool teachers use to engage students in their learning journey. It gives both teachers and students the opportunity to be creative and innovative. Every student has strengths and at BIS, we help them to find their individual superpowers. So they may flourish, whether in the classroom or outside the classroom. In short, BIS is more than just a school. It is really a home away from home, whether you are here from Munich or from anywhere else in the world. So that is an overview from me. To go into a bit more detail, allow me to pass over to Dr. April Yetzko and Nicola Maloney, who will briefly introduce themselves as well. Hi, good morning. It's nice to meet you virtually. I look forward to meeting you in person uh, when you come to our campus. I'm Dr. April Yetzko. I'm the principal here at City Campus. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit, Mrs. Maloney is going to talk to you about the curriculum, but first I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what makes City Campus and BIS so special. Um, I also am a parent. I have five children. Three of my kids are at the middle school and the high school at Heimhausen. And when I came to Germany two years ago to take this position, um, when I was looking where my career was going to take me next, I was able to use my parent eyes as well as my professional eyes to look for a school not only where I could grow professionally um, and has that same passion for education that I have, but a place where my kids, my, my three kids who attend BIS would also feel at home. And we were very excited to find uh, BIS and it's been a wonderful transition for us. And I wanna share with you some of the things that make this school so special and really make it feel like family. Um, the first thing is, is here in Munich, as I'm sure you already know, there are a lot of schools that speak English but City Campus is way more than an English speaking school. Um, and I'm gonna to talk to you about some of those things that are even bigger than our, the fact that our students of course become fluent very quickly in English if they're coming from another language. Oops. So when I look at City Campus, I see three main things that I wanna to talk to you about. We have a very holistic approach to education. Um, we are teaching our students not just to learn rote information, but they're learning to become lifelong learners. And as Dr. Sorensen said, we look at each student as an individual and work with them to find their pathway to success. Our holistic approach means that, honestly, if I could sum it up in one word, 
um, is joyful. We have a joyful learning environment where we are very focused on students' social emotional learning as well as their academic learning. Um, in the lower primary and our early childhood program, we have a play-based program where our students come to school and I think sometimes they forget uh, that they're learning in the process because they're so focused on having fun and making friends. Uh, we use developmentally appropriate pedagogy throughout the program. Uh, and as Dr. Sorensen said, we have a very diverse educational program and our students learn to love that their friends are coming from different countries, different language backgrounds, um, and come and share different ideas and traditions with each other. Our school is very collaborative. Students spend a lot of time working together and solving problems together. And that's part of what makes it so fun. Uh, and our families are also really involved. We have parent volunteers uh, who work throughout the school, who give us feedback, who share, and we see our parents as partners in education with our children. Our students are learning how to learn. Like I said, I think what separates our school in terms of education is when we look at how our students are learning, um, we have a PYP IB program. We are the only school in Munich that has all four programs. Um, and this includes inquiry-based hands-on learning. Mrs. Maloney is gonna talk to you more about what that's going to look like. Um, but I think the highlights are you, if you, when you walk in, uh, in our tour and you see our students learning, what you're gonna see is that they're having fun, they're engaging in conversations with each other. Um, and they're using critical thinking skills that really push them to the edge of their thinking. Um, they're encouraged to have action and agency. And those are things we're going to talk to you a little bit more about in a few minutes. And we look for each student to find success. So for us, success is not that all students are mastering one set of criteria. Um, of course, we have a very strong curri curriculum with expectations for what would happen in each grade level. But then we provide additional support if students are new to English. Uh, we have an English as an additional language program to support them in their language development so that they can continue to learn the content while they're learning language. We have a learning support program for our students who may need additional support in their academic learning. We have counselors on campus. We have level German classes. All of our students are pushing themselves in German, whether they're native German speakers and continuing to develop their reading, writing, and speaking skills in German or beginners or intermediate students as well, continue to develop their German skills. And then for our students who are ready to go past the expectations of the grade level, we have an extension activities to push our kids on their paths uh, to the next steps. And we use quite a few approaches to make this happen. Um, differentiation, sometimes students are working on the same goals and doing it in different ways. And students have a lot of choice in what they get to do. So that's part of the program as well, is them choosing how they're going to approach their learning, looking at their strengths, developing things that they need to work on. Um, and we use an ongoing assessment for learning. And what that means is this, the teacher's assessments are not to come up with grades um, and measure the outcome at the end as much as they are to develop what the learning should look like for individuals, for groups, and for whole classrooms throughout the program. Mrs. Maloney is going to talk to you more about what the curriculum entails. So she's up next. So good morning. My name is Nicola Maloney. I am the vice principal and the PYP coordinator here in City Campus. I have been in BIS for many, many years and it was just two years ago that one of my own daughters graduated from grade 12 and has moved on to university from BIS. The PYP, the PYP program has an educational framework model, which you can see on the right, and it places the student at the center of the learning. The student is the most important part and all learning in BIS looks at where is the child, where does the child need to go and how are we going to get there? It's therefore very personalized. We use inquiry-based learning to support the engagements in the classroom so the children are finding out and developing their own understanding. The learning is transdisciplinary. This means that we take language, maths, science, and we tie it together. For example, a unit on materials might involve the children weighing and measuring. It might involve them writing, 
to develop the procedural method and using their skills in that way. The skills are very important. We look at thinking skills, we look at research skills, social skills, and develop these throughout the whole unit of inquiry and the program. We value giving the children agency. Agency includes voice, choice, and ownership. By giving our students voice, choice, and ownership, it means they're very self-motivated and they are empowered as learners. And by empowering them as learners, they want to take action and realize that they can make a difference in the world that we are living in. Our early childhood center is a very, very special place. It, the children come in and they are obviously our youngest children in the school. And we work very hard to build relationships both with the parents and the students. And the children are involved in play-based learning activities where they don't realize they're learning, but at the same time, we're extending them in maths and language and science and all the other areas of the curriculum, including music, including PE. Language development is very important for our youngest learners, as it is throughout the school, actually. And they learn English and German in our early years program. Obviously, the PYP framework is about learning through inquiry, and this starts off right with our youngest learners. And in addition to that, we value developing their independence. The independence is very important be because we're moving them towards grade one, grade two, grade three, and all the way through, they are increasingly independent and able to take responsibility for themselves and also for their own learning. The Early Childhood Centre is, of course, part of our PYP programme. Inquiry-based learning is a term that some of you may be familiar with, but some of you may not be. Learning is exciting, and that is one of the most important things for us as educators, because if the learning is exciting, the children are motivated and they want to be finding out. They want to ask questions. They want to build their own understanding. In the world that we live in, the ability to collaborate and work as a team is really important, and this is part of our learning every day in the classroom. The children are making their own theories and they have the opportunity to test these. If I return to the example of materials that I used earlier, for example, they might decide that they know which materials are waterproof or which materials are very strong. And then they have the opportunity to set up experiments to test out their theories and see if they're right or if they need to change their thinking as they're moving through. Part of our learning process obviously includes giving children the opportunity to share their learning. And we share our learning in many different ways. It might be a written product. It might be through a poster. It might be through Google Slides. There's lots of different ways that they are supported to share their learning. As part of sharing their learning, obviously they also reflect on where they are as a learner what am I doing now? What do I need to know? How can I make it better? And that is part of the goal setting process to facilitate their development as learners, taking responsibility for themselves as individuals. Language learning is obviously a very important part of BIS. We are an English speaking school, but we value multilingualism. The picture on the right hand side you can see the teacher supporting a child with her inquiry learning she's reading the book she's discussing what she's finding out and English is a tool which allows the children to access the curriculum in addition to this we have small groups for English as an additional language so that we can scaffold our learners and help them achieve their potential we have leveled German classes to make sure their needs are met. And we have home language periods where the children are working in their home language. We believe that using their home language is a very important part of their learning because it allows them to function at their cognitive level as well. We have different elements to our 
language program, obviously we develop speaking, listening, reading, writing, and viewing and presenting. Viewing and presenting is of course very important for the world in which we are preparing our children for. This brings me on to mathematics. And mathematics is fun. You only have to look at the child on the right hand side here to see what fun he is having using and applying his mathematical skills, his understanding of angles. And we do use manipulatives and materials all the way through the school to ensure the children are able to construct their own meaning. They have to have a very solid foundation and understanding and from that they're able to then use and apply their learning in real life situations. Wherever possible, we connect the mathematical understanding to the units of inquiry. So they may be measuring, they may be collecting data that they can use and present. They may be the materials unit that I explained earlier. I was talking about the measurement skills they could develop. And so they would be able to weigh or they would be able to look at volume and capacity and making the learning authentic motivates the children. They can see not only what they have to do, but why they have to do it and how they might use it. So it really is fun, fun, fun. Assessment. Assessment is obviously a very important part of any schooling for every child. And it is a multifaceted process. We monitor, document, measure and report. It's very important for us that our assessment is ongoing and integrated into the curriculum. This gives the children the opportunity to have their needs met at the time. We can see where the child is and what we need to do now to support them and help them reach their potential. The children are actively part of the assessment process. They are involved in co-constructing criteria. So what does this mean? This means, for instance, if they were doing a piece of writing, we might look at a narrative text that was very well written, and we might look at one that was not so well written and say, okay, what makes a good piece? What are the criteria that you need to incorporate into your work so that you can also produce something that you're proud of? We use self and peer assessment, and from that comes the goal setting. Where am I? What do I need? to move forward and how am I going to get there? We also have formalized assessments and use these as benchmarkers, for instance, language, maths, and the ISA, International Schools Assessments. These allow us to see where the children are, but also where we are as a school, because we value looking at where we are and making sure that we are always moving forward. These are, results are obviously shared with parents. And the international schools assessments are done in grades three, grades four, and grade five. We share learning and reporting with parents, and we have different ways of doing it. We use electronic portfolios using the Seesaw app, and this enables the children to post photographs, to post videos, and to make voiceovers, which share their learning. Their learning is obviously partly final product, but it's also about the process. The process of learning is very, very important. We also have parent meetings where we invite parents into school to discuss anything that we feel would be better discussed on a one-to-one. -one. And we share our email addresses freely, so contact is always possible. We have written formal report cards, and these measure against the grade level expectations. So, we have, are the children meeting the expectations? Are they exceeding them or are they consolidating them? The importance of this is that it comes with an, a lengthy comment and the next steps so that the parents and the children can see where the child is going and how they can help and how they can support. Learning is a partnership, we work together. This partnership is also reflected in our parent conferences. We have three-way conferences, and we have student-led conferences. 
The three-way conferences involve the parents, the teacher and the students sitting down together, looking at their learning, sharing ideas and setting goals together. And the student-led conferences involve the student taking the responsibility and taking their parents around the classroom, sharing their learning, and the teachers are available to support as part of this process. Obviously, as I mentioned before, we also share the international school assessment results. When you come to the end of your time in City Campus, we move towards our PYP exhibition. This is a very special time for our children. Throughout City Campus, they have developed a love of learning. And this is the time when they get to celebrate this. They have a student initiated inquiry and they use their own skills that they have been developing throughout to undertake their inquiry, to share it with their parents, to work collaboratively. And we use our parents and our teachers from across the whole school to be mentors and support the learning. The children are given the opportunity to take action and make a difference. And this is the most amazing experience for our grade five students. It is like their ticket as they move on into secondary school. So besides the curriculum and some of those things that make City Campus really special, I also wanted to share some general information, like what does a school day look like at City Campus? Um, we come to school every day at 810. That's for our primary and for our early childhood program. And I'm going to show you a sample schedule for, to give you an idea of what this is an early years, what an early years day might look like. Um, HR is for homeroom, so that's where the students would spend most of their day. As you can see in our early childhood program, we have outdoor breaks built in um, along with lunch. There's a nap time. If your child doesn't nap anymore, uh, they are allowed to engage in quiet time activities during the nap time. Um, in the afternoon, we have a rotation of music, PE, and rhyme time, and those are given by our specialist teachers. So we have qualified music, physical education, and the librarian who works with the, the children at those times. Uh, outdoor learning is at also a very special part of our, primary, our early childhood program, where the students take their learning outside and engage in their outdoor activities with their learning. Uh, primary schedule is a little bit different. While the hours are not necessarily so different, um, what the kids are doing looks different. So you'll see German is worked in throughout the program where the students carry their language learning back and forth between German and English. Um, they also have physical education, music and library classes. Um, lunches and breaks are built into the schedule. Uh, and it, then you'll see in the afternoons, we have some very special activities. Home language, which Mrs. Maloney talked about, where the parents come in and work with students on culture and language activities in the students' home languages. iTime, iTime is a special time where students get to pick a topic that interests them and research and explore that. And that has ranged in many different things from arts to um, research to very creative thinking activities. And on Thursdays, we have an assembly where the whole school comes together in non-COVID times the whole school comes together. Um, and one of the classes and grade levels will perform and share information about their learning. We have a lot of additional things. Uh, the, there's a core curriculum. And then in addition to the core curriculum, we develop students balance in life through outdoor learning and swimming in the early years, residential and field trips throughout the year for students to experience uh, life outside the walls of the school. Um, during recess and lunchtime, there are clubs and activities that the students can engage in. The home language program to continue to develop language. Uh, electives, which are extracurricular activities that are happening during the school day. And then the after school activities and the after, scare, after school programs um, that take students into the, into the afternoon. And those are by choice. So you might wonder what happens after fifth grade, after they uh, enjoy their exhibition and share that with you. Well, we are one school with two different campuses. So our students move seamlessly from fifth grade into the middle school program, MYP, at Heimhausen campus. 
Um, we have a transition program. Our students in fifth grade right now are learning about some of the changes that they can expect at the middle school. And we'll also go over to visit and meet with teachers. And the teachers will come over here to meet our fifth grade students as well to always make sure that they have a contact and they feel safe as they're transitioning. We have transportation from the city to Heimhausen. For, so for our city campus families, as they move to Heimhausen, um, it's, a, it's a quick trip to get on the bus and head out to, to Heimhausen. And we have fantastic curricular alignment. Uh, our four IB programs align what the students are doing through primary, middle, and high school. So that the global and academic excellence that we have at city campus continues on as they go through school. We do have a distance learning program. Uh, due to COVID, we had to quickly come up with how we were going to change into distance learning as did schools across Germany. We were incredibly lucky because we have a staff who is not only highly qualified and very used to using technology in the classroom, but there's a, an innovative spirit at City Campus and at BIS. And our teachers um, have worked very hard to put together a program, a balanced program where when students need to work at home due to the pandemic, they have a balance of synchronous and asynchronous activities. Um, and the students already knows the tech tools because we use iPads throughout the program with a one-to-one -one iPad program in the fourth and fifth grade. Um, so we're able to seamlessly move back and forth as we need to between distance learning and in-person learning. So I hope that that answered some of your questions already about what makes City Campus and BIS so special, but we look forward to moving into having you ask some questions so that we can answer them for you. Great, thank you so much, um, April and uh, Nicola. And um, we will now um, start the question and answer set session. I hope that has given you a, a good overview and introduction to our BIS City Campus. And I will start by reading the very first question. Uh, we have the question, what is the biggest strength of BIS compared to the other international schools in Monterey, in, Monterey, in Munich? <laughs> it's the other M, in Munich. So um, I would say that um, we have we are lucky to live in an area that has so much choice. So parents are able to make a choice between um, the different international schools uh, that are in the area, the greater Munich area. Um, I would say that what we hear from people who go to different schools and then choose to come to BIS is the, the caring, nurturing environment that they walk into when uh, even through the admissions process, that that is something that is a very, very clear diversifier. Um, uh, but other than that, of course, we are one of the, if not the top um, international schools in the whole greater Munich area. And therefore um, that's one of our strengths. Um, if, if you want more information or if I didn't answer the question, just type in another question, please. Uh, then the next question, what is the average class size? Is it close to the maximum of 22 students? So in our early years, that's where the 22 students is the maximum, where we have two adults um, in, each, in the classrooms. Um, we have in our five to six-year-olds, so that's the class right before going into, um, into first grade, we currently have 20 students. Um, and in our three to four year old program, it's an average of 17 students. So it is below the 22 right now. And again, that's always with the two adults. Um, in the rest of the school grades one through five, we have an, um, the maximum of 24. Our average is closer to 16, 17. So parents of course um, enjoy that. Um, uh, it allows for very, very um, individualized uh, attention from the teachers. Next question, um, do you have an inclusive approach with children with special needs, ADHA, dysgraphia, et cetera? So I'm gonna hand this off to Dr. Yetzko because I know this is her passion. So Dr. Yetzko. Absolutely, I am a, I'm a learning support teacher by practice um, before I went into school leadership. We have a very inclusive program at BIS that runs from the primary school into the secondary school. Uh, so here at City Campus, we have three different learning support teachers who work with the classroom teachers to make sure that all students are accessing the curriculum and making progress um, based on their individual needs. And that goes into the secondary. So I told you I have five kids. 
one of my high school students is in uh, 10th grade this year, and he actually has ADHD and dyslexia, and he is very successfully supported in the secondary program as well, where the learning support teachers also make sure that, that the students are progressing uh, and meeting and that the school is meeting their needs as they're learning in the secondary program. So we're very inclusive in our approach to education. All right, next question. And actually I, I recognize this name. How many hours per week can the kids learn the home language? So why don't I pass that on to Nicola Maloney, Ms. Maloney. It, we, it obviously depends on the home language. If the home language is German, then the children have five hours per week of German classes. If the home language is not German, then we would have one period a week of mother tongue. And we also use what is known as translanguaging skills. Translanguaging skills means that the children are able to sometimes to discuss in their home language and then move their thinking into English. And this supports some of our um, learners because they're able to then function at their cognitive level and then transfer that into English. Thank you. Next question. Good morning, good morning. Uh, which classes are available in Heimhausen? Is the EC only available at the BIS in Schwabing? Um, no, actually we have the exact same program uh, in primary out here in Heimhausen. So we start with three-year-olds and go all the way through grade 12. Um, out here we have a little bit more space. Um, it's obviously more a suburban area, um, but we also have families that choose um, for their younger kids not to travel so far if they're in the Munich area to, to go to the city campus and when they're, they may even have siblings. So one sibling will be in Heimhausen and the other one will be in uh, the city campus. Um, it's, um, it's interesting to see where we have this bus, um, how many of those students are actually ex city campus that are now coming out to Heimhausen. But it's, it's completely duplicated. And that I think was um, part of what uh, Dr. Yetzko was also talking about is that it's completely aligned. The principal, Dr. Yetzko here, uh, Dr. Yetzko in the city campus, as well as um, Ms. Hölze out here in uh, Heimhausen, uh, they work very closely together as do the PYP coordinators, Ms. Maloney and Ms. Austin. All right, next question is, can you expand a bit on the four IB programs? Happily, the, so we start with the IB primary years program, the PYP, which spans the three-year-olds three up through grade five. Um, and I think you've gotten a, a good overview of the PYP program. The next one is the MYP program, the middle years program, and that spans grades six through 10. Um, and we actually call it MYP one, MYP two, MYP three, and so on to MYP five. Um, at the end of that MYP program, um, uh, they can, Students can all actually also get the Mittlere Reife, um, so a German equivalent. So it is a leaving certificate recognized here in Germany as well. And the MYP program is, um, it's, it's um, kids have again more uh, choices or not choices, but they, well, they have choice too, but they have uh, the different subjects um, with specialist teachers, which is a little bit different than in the primary. The primary has the homeroom teacher. Um, sixth grade is a transition year, so they actually do have a homeroom teacher, um, and then there are certain four, four courses that they go outside with different teachers, so that would encompass um, the, the coursework is, of course, they have English, they have German, they have a third language, they have math, they have science, they have um, humanities, which is a combination of history and geography, then they have um, one of the arts, music, art, or drama, and that circulates. Um, uh, then they have physical education, physical social health education, and I think I caught them all. Um, so forgive me if I, if I left out, you can definitely ask me if, if, if it's one that uh, I didn't mention and you think it should be there. Um, then we go into the last two years um, and we have both of the two leaving certificates that the IB offers. The, we have the um, the oldest of the programs, which is the diploma program, which most people know as the IB, um, but it's actually officially, it's the IBDP. Uh, the diploma program, you're required to choose uh, six subjects, three at a higher level and three at a standard level. And then you also have a, um, a core, which is called um, 
community action service pass where they have to the students have to have certain amount of hours in each one of those over the two year period and um, and also they have tok which is theory of knowledge um, and they write an extended essay, which is, um, it is not allowed to be any longer than 4,000 words, which many students find challenging. At first they think, oh my goodness, but then they find it really challenging to, it, it's a research project that is over a year. So um, over the course of a year, they write their extended essay. The careers related program, um, that's actually the newest of all the programs of the IB, although it's already been around for 15 years. The career related program allows students to choose um, um, a either a BTEC, um, which is a, a British um, uh, business oriented uh, subject direction or an arts um, direction or um, a um, aeronautical engineering direction in addition to having some of the DP classes. In that way, they only have to choose, they can choose up to four classes um, but the, the requirements of the higher level, standard level, those don't exist in the career related program. Both of those in the IBCP as well as the IBBP um, lead you to a university. So you can go study with either one. Um, as, uh, as I said, 100% of our students graduated in, not only with the high school diploma, but with both of those programs. We had our first cohort of CP students this last year in 2020 that went through and um, and they were all successful in getting uh, into the university of their choice, which was very exciting for us. I hope that wasn't too long, um, but happy to happy to talk about those those programs. Next question for the primary school timetable, there is the allocation of German is the is this language classes or are these integrated in the lesson ie science class in German. Um, I'm going to pass that on to uh, Ms. Maloney. Okay, when we're teaching language, there's obviously different aspects that we need to develop. So speaking, listening, reading and writing. And there will be times when certain elements have to be taught as standalone language elements. But there are also times when we will, as far as possible, integrate it into the learning that is happening in the classroom so the children are able to make the connections. So Excellent. it is both, I would say. It is, yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, uh, next question. Hi, will this Zoom conference be recorded and made available to the participants? Yes, it is. Um, it's being recorded. That's why I'm, answer, I'm reading all the questions and it will be available on our website as will the presentations. Okay, next question. Can kids join BIS during the course, for instance, in January or even in May? Absolutely. As an international school, um, we are always taking up kids, um, regardless of when, when they arrive in Munich. Um, and that's part of the, the caring environment that uh, parents do, do describe. It's so important to us that every child feels they belong, and they do. Everyone finds at least one friend, mostly many, many more. Uh, next question. Uh, thank you for all these great information. At which grade do subjects like geography, biology, physics, et cetera, start? So they start already in, um, well, actually in primary, they actually start with, with the, those concepts. We don't call them um, specifically biology, physics, chemistry until ninth grade, um, where they actually have a, a certain um, uh, focus only on chemistry or only on biology or only on physics so that the students then have an easier time to choose which of those disciplines they want to do when they enter in the CP or the DP. Um, but the science is natural science and so all three of those subjects are always in integrated. Geography, um, I don't know if this question was done posted before I, I had answered or talked about humanities. Um, it's actually not even called humanities anymore. It's called individuals uh, and societies. Um, and that is a combination of history and geography. And that begins in sixth grade as, as a discrete subject. But again, those geography topics, et cetera, are already beginning in the primary, primary years. I can recall when my son was in third grade, um, uh, he had to already uh, look at the map um, and, and had a, a very, it, was that where we are in place and time? I can't remember the name of the unit of inquiry. Yes, Nicola is. is, is. So they're already dealing with those subjects. It's a very spiraled 
curriculum so that, uh, as Dr. Yetzko said, what you're learning, it just keeps being built upon. Um, next question. Hello, thank you for the great presentation. Thank you. Uh, what is Early Childhood Center exactly? From which age students uh, are allowed to enter the Early Childhood Center? Is it a kindergarten? Can you explain the admissions process? And what shall I do if I want to enroll my daughter born in 2016 in 2023 into the primary school and my son born in 2020 into Early Childhood Center? So um, I, will, I will answer briefly and then I will pass it over to um, Petra Douglas who can talk about the admissions much better than I can. Um, first of all, the Early Childhood Center starts for, with three-year-olds. Three um, and again, it's one of those where um, uh, it, we have a rolling enrollment. So it doesn't really matter when in the year you want to start. Um, and uh, what did it allow me to enter there. Is it, uh, it is a kindergarten. Yes, it, it is like a German kindergarten. So it starts from three and then three and five-year-olds, three to four or five-year-olds. And then, then we have the year right before going into um, the, the grade one. Um, and then I'll pass it over to Ms. Douglas. Hi, the admissions process is quite easy. It's all done online. So you just go on our website and you'll find under admissions, you'll find the tab saying how to apply and then the application is done online. For a school start in 23, it's still very early. So it's sufficient if you do this like in autumn uh, 22 um, and then submit everything. You will find a checklist of all the documents that you need for primary school, which are basically some kind of report of a previous kindergarten or a school, um, the birth certificate or passport. We need a photo and proof of measles vaccination. That's mm -hmm. important too. And then you upload all this and then I'll be in contact with you anyway. Uh, but if you want a tour or a personal meeting with me beforehand, just contact me and we'll set something up, no problem. Super, thank you. So considering there are so many international students, is there any focus on, oops, I lost it. <laughs> I was reading, is there any focus on learning about German culture? Absolutely, and uh, for some details, I'll pass you on to Ms. Maloney again. So German culture is very important to us and we address German culture all the time through our program. For instance, in the units of inquiry, uh, the early years children do a unit on celebrations and they look at celebrations from around the whole world. And part of this would obviously be looking at maybe October 1st and the Christmas markets. And in non-COVID times, we've had little excursions to the Christmas markets for them to experience it. The German teachers also integrate culture into their teaching as well. St. Martin is a very important festival that we celebrate. We actually very often do it as an assembly and the children make their lanterns and they learn the songs and they have their parade. And the other place that we have opportunities for culture is obviously for the German children who are in the home language German group as well but German culture is integrated into our program. And the beauty of an international program is we're able to celebrate all cultures and the world cultures. Mm -hmm. So I think I've answered this question before, but I'll, I'll just do it just in case. Um, it was a question, is it possible to get the presentation so I can share it with my wife? Um, absolutely, it will be available on our website. So uh, the recording as well as the actual presentations. Next question, uh, what is the current experience with regards to teacher or student fluctuation? Do the kids experience quite some change of teachers or classmates come and go? Excellent question. Um, we actually have, I would say one of the lowest transition or uh, of, of staff um, that I've ever witnessed of any other international school. Um, we have very, very few, very, very low turnover of staff. Um, and of course it also is not a horrible thing when we do have some turnover because it does bring in some new perspectives and, and uh, keeps the innovation alive in our school. As far as the students are concerned, um, we have, uh, oh, I, I'll say that the average length of stay of a, of a staff member right now at our school is uh, just over six years, where the average for international schools is between two and three years. So it is quite high. Then, um, as far as our students are concerned, we do have a transition. We do have a, an expat community that 
um, transitions uh, probably every three to five years. Very few go less than three years, but it depends on the company. And then that does happen. I can tell you, um, since my son has been here since second grade um, and now in eighth grade, um, he has almost the exact core group um, that he became friends with in second grade. There were a few that had have left, but actually he, through technology, is still in, in, in contact with them. In fact, one that left in fourth grade is now coming back um, and will be um, a, an exchange student living with me. Um, uh, so the, the contact has, has it, it just continues. So um, I know, um, again, as a mom, you worry that the, the, they make these great friends and then they leave and then it's so sad. Um, it's, it's amazing the network of kids, uh, the network internationally that they, these kids then have. And I can say the same about my, my two older children. Um, it's amazing the connections that they still keep. Um, then it says, um, do you have any program after three? Yes, we, we have both after school care um, and we also offer after school activities. Those are both fee-based, um, but they range from um, swim team to uh, movie making. I, I think uh, Dr. Yetzko can probably talk more about that. Yeah, we have a lot of after school activities, extracurricular activities that change throughout the year. So it's based on student interests and the staff that we have. And they range from um, swimming to karate to robotics. Um, we have things like knitting, a uh, green team that does environmental activities. Um, so there's always a lot of different things for, for the students to choose from and try out new things. Okay, so the next question is, uh, is BIS a staatlich anerkannt or staatlich genehmigt? And that's a really good question. I, I'll explain a little bit, bit for those who may not know what that is, um, so that you have an idea what, what that means. Um, staatlich anerkannt is, is, is it recognized by the state uh, or is it just approved by the state? So actually I have to answer this in two parts because um, we are, um, we are recognized by the state um, uh, for grades one through nine um, here in Heimhausen. And then we are recognized or, or we are approved in our city campus and grades 10 through 12. Our kindergarten in Heimhaus Heimhausen is now not only approved, but recognized. And in city campus, it is recognized and in the approval process. So um, it, it's a little bit more complicated and gets very political. Um, but I hope that uh, that gives you a little bit of an idea of, um, of where the school is. It is all um, in process too. Um, for, uh, can all students proceed to secondary or is there a selection after grade five? like after fourth grade in German regular schools. Um, there is not a selection. Um, I have to make it clear too, and I don't know how clear this came out when, um, when the, during the presentation, is that we don't give grades until grade six. So students do not get grades. We don't believe the primary, primary years pr program doesn't believe that we should label kids um, and that early. Um, so they don't receive any grades until grade six. Um, so there isn't a selection process. There is, of course, we always want to make sure there's a best fit. So um, if, if there is a, a student who we don't think we can provide the best for, then we will certainly um, communicate that with parents. But that happens far before the end of grade five. So, um, and again, we have such a wide range of, of students that we can um, support and, and service that um, it, it doesn't come up very often at all. The next question, um, how do you work with the parents on transitioning a child coming from a German state school into BIS, for example, a grade two child? Why don't I give that one to Dr. Yetzko? Absolutely, well, we just had some students who came to join us um, after the holiday in January, and that was an unusual time for them to join because it was distance learning. So they were not only joining us, but joining us during distance learning. Um, one of the students in particular, we just met as a team because part of our transition process is all of the teachers who are working with students meet together to discuss how to best support those students. And one of our new fourth graders who started in January, we were just discussing how um, the, the attention, the monitoring, the communication with parents, we have a student who's reporting that after a month, including distance learning, 
Um, he has new friends and he's settled in to the new school and has reported how happy he is um, and that he was not happy in his past school. And then he's very happy transitioning into BIS. So I'd say that the, the main transition is communication, communication between the teachers and communication of the teachers with the, the family and the student. All right, next question. Um, do the children also have the opportunity to explore and get to know nature during kindergarten? And how often are they outside in the nature? Thanks. I'll pass that on to Ms. Maloney. So we are a city school, so it's a, it is very much a priority for us to use the outside environment in the best way that we can. Our children are outside, obviously, every single day for playtimes using the climbing equipment and using bikes and trikes. But in addition to that, we have we take them outside as part of their learning so that they are exploring the environment. I know that our kindergarten group is hoping to look at shadows outside tomorrow and they go out every week. We have parks available to us. We can use the park right across the road or the English Garden. And we also use the natural environment as much as we can connecting to our units of inquiry. So we explore plants and things that make plants grow and they grow their own. We explore mini beasts and we look for and look at the life cycles of the bees and we go on hunts and we use the natural environment as much as we can. Excellent, thank you. Uh, next question is, what is the required level in written English to enter your school in fifth grade? Zero, there is no, no required level of written English. We take kids from all over the world that have absolutely no English up until the middle of grade eight even. Um, that's really where our specialty lies in um, integrating students that don't have English. They may have one or two or three other languages. Um, and making sure that they keep that, that home language as well as um, access the curriculum through English. So um, there's a lot of support there. And like I say, that's really where we shine. Which criteria are the admission based on? A uh, very good question. And I'm going to, as a first one, I'm going to send it to uh, Ms. Douglas and then maybe also um, Dr. Yesko because the file goes through all of us. So how about you start, um, Ms. Douglas? Yes, sure. Um, the admissions, well, first of all, we have to check if there are places available. At the moment for the city campus, we have places in, in most grades. Um, I think Yes, you, you can apply for all grades. So we look at that. Then we look at all the um, we look at the school reports, the kindergarten reports. Um, we have a look at the families to see if they fit, or not the families, the, the children if they fit into IB school, or um, if we are the right school for them. We make sure that we look at all possible sort of um, learning support needs to see that we can um, support the child the right way. But basically, first of all, we check if we have places available and um, we look thoroughly at all the applications. And then of course, Dr. Yetzko, she looks at all the um, academic sides as well. And um, maybe I'll pass on to her to sort of um, elaborate on that a little bit. Absolutely, when we're looking, when we're looking at admissions, um, assuming that there are spaces available, the decision-making process is really based on um, whether we believe a student will be successful here. We do have a lot of learning support that's available to students, but if there's a student who has needs beyond what we could offer, then obviously we, we want to make sure that the child is in the right placement for them. Um, so that would be a situation where we might guide a parent to a school that has uh, the services that would be available for that student. Um, but our, because we have such an amazing group of teachers, our goal is not to say, how do we get the highest level coming in? Our goal is to say, how do we make each of our students um, advance at the highest level that they can and find their success? So really what we're looking for is students, um, I mean, we're looking for, for a wonderful cohort of students to come in. And that just means that those are kids who are ready to learn um, and that they might need additional support. And that's, that's fine. But we're just screening to make sure that we have the supports that would be available. Excellent. Okay, next one. Um, and I'm not sure if there was a typo, um, but I'm, I'll answer the question first as, it, as it's written. Um, so it asks, could you please give a short overview of the school feel? 
So if you're talking about the feeling uh, when you come in, I will tell you, you see smiling faces, uh, kids really engaged in their learning. Um, students, we know every student's name. Um, the teachers know, um, know the, they know uh, and have built up amazing relationships with the students. I can tell you even, like I said, my eighth grader, um, he was so pleased when he heard that next week he can come back to school. Um, and it's not because he's bored um, at home. The distance learning program is definitely keeping him busy, um, but he loves coming to school. Um, now, if it was a question and the L at the end wasn't supposed to be there and it was a question about the school fees, then I will um, forward you to Dr. Uh, to, to Ms. Douglas. Yeah, sure. Um, the, the fees for the, we have tuition fees. The tuition fees for grade one, for instance, are about 15,000 euros per year. And then in addition to that, we have a registration fee and an entrance fee. And um, I'll be very happy to explain the details um, in a personal conversation, but just contact me. And then I can also explain about the different payment options. Excellent. So I hope one way or the other, we answered that question. Um, do the students get homework to prepare for? And if yes, is homework support part of an afternoon class? Let me pass that on to Ms. Maloney. Okay, we refer to homework more as home learning and we don't introduce new work at this point. It's more practicing the skills that they've developed in class. So we encourage them to be taking reading books home and reading. They use a platform for mathematics to further their mathematics skills and other home learning activities are connected to the units of inquiry. For instance, they might have to interview their grandparents or some family member if they're doing a unit on where we are in place and time. The after school club does have the opportunity for them to do their homework in there, but the home learning is not a big part of our program because the students are in school all day. We, it's very important for us that the students have the time to socialize and to relax when they get home as well because they've been in school a very long time and they love it being in school. And for us, it's important that they love learning. So the next question is, do you already have indication of the 21-22 calendar? Yes, we do. It's actually also posted on our website. Um, our calendar, I'll just take this opportunity to say that our calendar is a bit different than the German state schools. We try to align the bigger um, holidays with the German state schools, um, but we start in the middle of August or mid to late August. Um, and then we go until the end of June, early July. Um, so we're off by just a little bit there. We have the same number of days though as the German system. Um, in fact, we're required to. Our, our calendar is approved by the Bavarian government every year. So the 21-22 is definitely on our website. I know it's under admissions, um, but I think there's even a, a quick link to our calendars. Um, if the family moves and the child has to change school, how accepted are the graduates during primary up to middle school at German schools or other international schools? Well, it's very simple to, that's the whole idea why the International Baccalaureate came into being was to make for expat or expat families that were moving from one country to another to make that move for their children and their families, of course, as seamless as possible. So any school that is offering the, the International Baccalaureate, very seamless, not a problem to change. And I can tell you from my own children, as well as I'm sure, uh, my, my older children switched from Monterey uh, as well into Dresden and my younger to, from Dresden down to Bavaria, not an issue. And I'm sure, um, like I say, Dr. Yesko with her children can say, can confirm that. Um, we've had students um, transfer you from um, our school to um, any of the other, not only German, but any other um, national curriculum. The, again, the point of the curriculum is such that you should be able to repatriate into your home country um, with no problems. Um, I think the, what I will say is that because of the way that we are very inquiry-based and collaborative in our, um, in our teaching and our practice in the, in the school, um, students that transfer from our school into a German school, and I, I can give you a quote because I know this, this student, um, he wanted to be on the national basketball team and therefore, had to be at uh, the German sports gymnasium. 
So he transferred from our school to the German school. And he said the difference between, um, and he did, the, he did so in grade eight. Um, he said the difference between our school and um, the school I'm at now is that in BIS, you're asked your opinion, you're asked to think, really think, and then that's what you're, you're being assessed on um, versus we're being just told what to think and then we have to spit it back um, on the test. So that's the real difference. And so those, this, and oh, by the way, he's coming back now for grade 11. So <laughs> he's, still on the, he's still on the national team, but he wants to come back for his DP um, with us. Um, so I think students enjoy the kind of learning um, that we do here. Um, they can transfer back into any of the systems, whether it's the US, whether it's India, whether it's Spain, whether it's Germany. Um, it is just a very different way the older you get of, of learning. Good morning. Impressed by the passion of all speakers throughout the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Our, our additional virtual meetings offered as a follow up on this open day for one to one conversation, or are they available on request? Absolutely available on request. I think your first point of reference will be Miss Douglas, and she's happy to, to talk further. Um, next one uh, I am interested in preschool admission. Um, is it the same lead time as for primary school one year ahead or is it longer and can you give an indication of tuition fee for preschool um i will I pass that right over to miss douglas um the admissions process is the same um again for beginning in august um if you start in september october november that's plenty of time but you can still do it now for august we still have some places left um, so that's that's okay. You're still you're still well in time. There isn't a, a deadline for an application. So as long as we have places, we accept students. For the fees, they are very similar to the primary school. So that, that the answer from before about fifteen thousand for tuition plus a registration and an entrance fee. I think the only difference for for um, that is the way you are able to um, handle the the fee in your tax returns. If I remember correctly, from my way back um, having kids in kindergarten versus school. Uh, about German language, how much do you estimate the learning program um, effective for supporting children in integration in the country, both early years and primary? Do during Early years children learn some basics of German. Oh, absolutely. In primary, do they can they speak A1 level? Um, I would I'll pass this on, but we are not mother tongue German, but we would like to get integrated in the country. Thanks a lot for a great present. Thank you. Um, I, um, I I will just say that um, as an international school, it's very important for us that we integrate with our host country. And that's why we do teach German. Um, if I were a school now in Spain, I would probably be teaching Spanish. If I was in Dubai, I would be teaching Arabic. That's part of the, the concept of international schools that you do integrate yourself within the host country. But for the rest, I will pass it on to Ms. Maloney. So building on that, yes, they have German in the early years program. They also have German in the primary years program. And we don't measure the children and give them grades. We also don't measure them against the CEF framework, which is where I presume you're using A1 from. Um, we do encourage the children to use their German as much as possible. And we also encourage them then to play with the children in their own neighborhood and to join some local clubs as well, because this supports them becoming integrated both at school and in the local community. Um, and I, I can say again, um, we had a family that went camping. Uh, they went camping in, um, I think it was in Croatia. This is obviously also COVID, pre-COVID. And the five-year-old um, who was, she was actually originally from, I believe it was Italy, if I remember correctly. Anyway, um, she, um, there was a woman who was there next to the, the spigot and the woman said, uh, said something to the, the, the girl said something to the woman and the woman looked at her like she was confused because she had said something in German. Um, and so then she switched to um, Italian and when it was still confusing, then she switched to English and that's at five. I mean, our kids are amazing. Uh, they will want, they want to make themselves understood. So it, it's, it's amazing how quickly they pick that up. 
Um, is there a rebate in tuition fees for twins with a wink? <laughs> um, we do have a sibling's discount, but unfortunately it doesn't start with twins. It starts with the third child. So, um, but you can find out more about that from, uh, from Ms. Douglas. So this is all I could have said, yes. Uh, just yeah. when we talk about it. Um, and and uh, we do have a, also a fin financial assistance program as well as payment programs. So again, I, I would just reach out directly to Ms. Du Ms. Douglas. Um, the next, what services are not included in the tuition fee? That's an excellent question. Um, we have a catering service, a, a lunch service that is not included. Um, it's actually award-winning Stromberg. Um, uh, he is, I mean, in fact, they've named, changed the name now. And I've, I, I think it's Organic Garden is the name of, the, of it now. But um, it's the Michelin star chef. Um, and so we're very, very, very pleased with the quality of the food. Um, and um, then these after school activities, those are also additional. If we have a residential trip, um, it, we, while it's subsidized, we subsidize it. Um, there is usually a fee if it's, if it's an overnight, uh, a, like a week away trip. Um, am I missing anything else? Uh, I can't think of anything off the top of my head um, that that is I, I, maybe if you're if you're buying a PE kit, you know, for the, the PE has a uniform, that's an extra charge. Um, OK, a typical day at reception level. Can you please elaborate? So I'm going to hand that over to Miss Maloney. So for those of you who are not familiar, reception is our EC1 and the children come in in the morning, they work in their small groups and they have a little classroom meeting time. They're given choice of activities that they choose from. And then we work with them to support their learning through maths and language in a play-based environment. We also use the outdoor area. And then in the afternoon, they have the opportunity for PE, for music and for what we call rhyme time. And the timetable, I think you will find in the slides because um, Dr. Yetzko shared the early years timetable. Uh, a great way to be able to see, though, is um, what it looks like, what it feels like is to, to go to our website, but also um, you can uh, organize something with um, Miss Douglas and she will actually take you on a virtual tour with the iPad through the class so you actually have an idea of what that looks like. Uh, question is, hello, I'm coming to the end now. So, I mean, I know we're already after our time, but we wanna make sure everybody's questions are answered. Uh, hello, is the alphabetization in primary school happening in English and German at the same time? I'm gonna hand that over to Ms. Maloney again. So yes, is the answer to that. We do reading and writing through, which develops as the children go through the school. In the early years, we start introducing English phonics and English writing, very much focused on the children being empowered to take responsibility and use emergent writing. And then as they move up to school, we support them with their spelling and their reading as they go. The German reading and writing is started from grade one. Excellent. Um... Uh, uh, hello, it was mentioned that parents are actively involved in children's learning at BIS. Could you give a few examples how we will be involved? I'm going to pass this to Dr. Yetzko. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to tell you right now during COVID times, it's a little more limited than it would normally be, although we do have parent volunteers in the building right now. Uh, but our volunteer, our parents can be involved at the, at the level that they want to be, and that looks different for a lot of families. Um, so it's not that you have to be in the building volunteering, but we do have a lot that like to come in. So that's opportunities to assist in the classroom and work with students directly. We have people who come in to work in the library, parents who do outdoor learning activities with the students or local field trips. Um, during mother tongue, it's parents and some of the, the teaching staff that have native level proficiency in the different languages who work with the students uh, to design home language, learning for, for the kids in culture and language activities. Um, and, and again, during non-COVID times, our parents are in and out of the building, building relationships and, and communication with the teachers and the students around them. 
We also have a, a parent organization where they um, they have grade level reps, so that that and these grade level reps can meet with um, with Dr. Yetsko and, and Ms. Maloney and share any any things that you know both concerns and and celebrations of what's going on in the different grade levels. So we try to keep that communication really tight. Those parents also then will um, organize like a spooky day um, for Halloween, or they will organize a wine and cheese event just for the parents. Um, so it's a real great way to keep community um, together. Um, and it has, it's been tough during this COVID time, but even then it's amazing what they've been able to pull together. So this is the last question. Um, about the application process for primary schools starting in September 2022, until when can we apply? I'll pass that on to Ms. Douglas. Again, um, we don't have a deadline for applications. As long as we have places, we can accept applications for the current or for the next school year. So um, you have time. The easiest or the, the most comfortable for us is if you do that in autumn, but if you do it in January, February, March, that's also okay. So. Um, yeah, and you can also start it. It's, it's non-binding until you returned everything signed or you can return it and then we can be flexible um, about the start date. So um, just just approach me and then we'll we'll talk about it. Yeah, we've definitely had to be um, flexible during COVID because people were not even getting their visas in time. Um, so uh, flexibility is key. So um, I want to thank everybody who has um, hung in there for the extra 15 minutes as well. Excellent questions. I hope we've been able to answer everything. If not, you know how to reach us. As I said, uh, the presentation, this has all been recorded. It will be up on our website. Um, and we hope to see you and welcome you to BIS very soon. Thank you.